Welcome back everyone to 6.7 hyperbolic functions. I think we have all of the definitions and theorems that we need, so let's start trying some example problems. All right, so the first thing, we have a few derivative problems here. So I want to take the derivative of hyperbolic tangent, so that's going to be hyperbolic secant squared, and then I need to remember to apply the chain rule. So the derivative of the square root of 1 plus x squared is going to be 1 half, quantity 1 plus x squared to the negative 1 half, and then chain rule again, 2x. Simplify, rearrange the uh, functions a little bit, and we see we have x times hyperbolic secant squared of square root of 1 plus x squared all over square root of 1 plus x squared. Let's do one more derivative problem. Uh, again, looks like a lot of chain rule here. So we have to remember the derivative of hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cosine and then leave the rest alone, times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of natural log is one over its innards. And then times the derivative of hyperbolic cosine, uh, which is positive hyperbolic sine. So that's the big thing here. We can rewrite this, right? Hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine together will make hyperbolic tangent. And then this other function. All right. Now let's try one here, a nice limit function, a nice limit problem here. So let's rewrite this, uh, hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. So hyperbolic sine, I know this is e to the 2x minus e to the negative 2x, all over 2. And hyperbolic cosine of 3x is e to the 3x plus e to the negative 3x, all over 2. And we can see why I wrote it like this, right? These twos will cancel. So in some sense, uh, let's just erase these here. All right, so I'm going to do a quick informal way, and then uh, because I'm paranoid, I'll talk through a more formal way. So we can see as x goes to infinity, actually these pieces are going to go to zero. Um, so this is going to be something like 1 over e to the x, right? Because this is e to the 2x divided by e to the 3x. Well, e to the, sorry, 1 over e to the x is going to head towards zero as x gets very large. So I think that the answer should be zero. Again, just because I'm a little bit paranoid, I'm going to actually rely back onto the squeeze theorem, or the squeeze theorem to show that this should actually be zero. So this is a little bit more formal of a way here. So the first thing is that when x is greater than zero, actually hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine uh, are both uh, greater than zero. Okay? And the 2x and the 3x don't make much of a difference. They're both going to be greater than 0. So therefore, when you divide hyperbolic sine of 2x divided by hyperbolic cosine of 3x, this is going to be greater than or equal to 0. Right? And again, that's because these pieces, when you have x greater than or equal to 0, they're both positive. Okay. So therefore, looking at our function here, this e to the 2x uh, minus e to the negative 2x divided by this e to the 3x plus e to the negative 3x, right? we know this thing's going to be greater than or equal to 0. So that's a good first step. And the claim is that this is going to be less than <coughs> another function. And right, this is where I use the squeeze theorem. So uh, if I don't subtract, that's going to be larger. right? And if I divide by less, so instead of dividing by you know, 5, I divide by 4, right? This is also going to be larger. So I don't subtract, and I divide by less. And so since this limit is also 0, we know uh, that the limit of the inside guy must indeed be 0. So by the squeeze theorem, we know that that limit of hyperbolic sine of 2x divided by hyperbolic cosine of 3x does indeed equal 0. Okay, let's try some integral problems now. So integrating with hyperbolic functions. Uh, looks like I need a u substitution here. So I'm going to go ahead and let my u be 3x plus 1. And then take the derivative. And we can see that we can exchange uh, this for hyperbolic sine of u uh, times 1 third du. Now when we integrate, we have to be careful, right? Normally when you integrate just sine, it would be negative cosine. But because it's hyperbolic, remember it's positive. Then we substitute back in for our u, 
And that's the answer. Now, hyperbolic tangent, well, the first thing, maybe I don't like this 4x, so I could say u is 4x, uh, and then du, uh, of course, would be um, 4 dx. And so let's kind of skip this one a little bit. Uh, so this is going to be 1 fourth hyperbolic tangent of u du. Right, just going a little bit fast there. And the idea is, how do I integrate hyperbolic tangent? Well, a good idea is to split this up and to actually use uh, u substitution again. So in fact, I'm going to use v since I already used u. So v is going to be hyperbolic cosine with the idea that when I take the derivative of it, I get hyperbolic sine of u du. And I can see that I can trade this in here for one of my dv's. So that's a good sign. So we have 1 fourth, and then my hyperbolic sine uh, of u du becomes my dv, and my hyperbolic cosine becomes v. So now this is going to be 1 fourth, and when I integrate 1 over v, I get the natural log of the absolute value of v. And so this is going to be natural log of the absolute value of hyperbolic cosine of u. And then the claim is, well, hyperbolic cosine is always positive. It's always greater than 1, so I don't really need the absolute value. And u is the same thing as 4x. So there we go, my final answer. All right, the final problem that I have here, the main thing is that we need to recognize that we have hyperbolic cosine squared minus hyperbolic sine squared. So we should recall that this is actually the same thing as 1. So therefore, this problem simplifies down a lot if we recognize this. This is just the integral from 0 to 1 of t cubed dt. So that's 1 fourth t to the fourth. Evaluate from 0 to 1. So that's just 1 fourth. All right, and that's all there is to it. I think you now have enough information to do your homework in 6.7. I'll see you next time in 6.8.